A lot of things in our lives depend on the relationships with others. Family, colleagues, friends. And every animal is a part of some kind of society too. Those creatures that live alone also have to communicate with individuals from their species from time to time. As scientists say, the animal societies can be divided according to three main factors. Dominance, collaboration, and territorialism. Of course, human society is much more complicated, but the same basic factors are the keys to the relationships among people. Today we want to learn what human societies have in common with animal ones and how they differ. Let's start! 10. Lion Kingdom Apart from other felines that live separately, lions live in social groups called prides. The social structure of the pride can be compared to archaic patriarchal systems that exist in some countries even today. Just imagine sultanate of some kind, where the sultan has absolute power and several wives. In Middle Ages, sultans had large harems with more than 300 women. Pride typically consists of one to three males and a dozen females along with their young. In the pride, the females form the main part. They usually stay in the same pride from birth until death. Young males always leave home in search of their mates. Taking over the pride is the only way to get a family, so they often form coalition with other males to do that. When new males come, they get rid of all living cubs. A male takeover resets the reproductive clocks of all the females in a pride, and they give birth synchronously. In the pride, females usually hunt, while resident males protect prides from rival coalitions and mate. Females respect their males. They even let them eat the better part of prey. 9. The Hyena Clans The social system among hyenas differs greatly from that among lions. Firstly, they organize themselves into large clans of 50 to 80 members. Each clan is like a real mafia clan. But instead of godfather, hyenas have the godmother. Yes, hyenas have a matrilineal society in which the females are more dominant and aggressive than males. And this society has a very strict hierarchy. The main female possesses all the power and passes on her rank to her offspring. Other females are cool too. Since more dominant and aggressive females get a higher rank within the clan, they also choose males to mate. Besides, bigger female individuals have more chance to raise a larger number of young. A higher rank guarantees greater access to food and higher chances to survive for both mother and offspring. 8. A Wolf Pack We all hear different legends about wolf packs. But the truth is that they are very complex social groups. Like people in earlier periods of time, wolves have extended families. They consist of parents, offspring, siblings, aunts and uncles. Sometimes wolves let in the wolves that left other packs. The main individuals of the pack are a breeding pair of alphas. They establish order and rules. They are the glue keeping the pack together. If something happens to the alphas, the pack can break up. After the alphas, wolves second in command are called the betas. They are followed by mid-ranking wolves, and finally the omegas. Both mid and low-ranking positions are changeable. Yes, this social structure reminds the social order in jails, for example. But there is great difference. Wolves care for each other as individuals. They can be friends and take care of their own sick and injured. Wolves share knowledge across generations. It means that the older wolves share hunting strategies and techniques with the younger ones. Besides, the pack takes care of all elderly members. And if we look at wolf packs, we can see the typical features of different tribe societies or even the monarchy structure. The queen and the king rules and other obey. In prehistoric tribes, as you know, the power of the ruling family was dominant, and their will was accepted by the members. The relationships within a tribe were very close. Even marriages between close relatives were typical in that societies. 
In wolf packs, their inbreeding also happens but not between siblings or one litter. Sometimes low-ranking wolves change packs, as young people in ancient tribes would go to other tribes for getting married. 7. The Ants Colonies Ant colonies have some of the most complex social organization in animal kingdom. Usually, colony is the home to four different types of ants. Queens, drones, workers, and allets. The queen ant is both the founder and leader of the colony. Her primary role is to populate the colony by laying thousands of eggs. Queen ants live much longer than other ants. In some ant species, she lives up to 30 years. Drone males are ants whose only function is to mate. As soon as they did their business, they die. There are also worker ants, which specialize in cutting leaves, defending the colony, taking care of larvae, and many other kinds of work. And the ant colony has allets or reproductives. They are winged males and females which establish new colonies. Some scientists say that ants' colonies have some kind of a caste system. This type of social structure had existed in India for more than 4,000 years and was abolished officially in 1950. But some signs of these traditions mean a lot even today, in spite of serious changes. There is another point of view that every ant colony is like the whole human civilization. The ants, like humans, do the farming, growing fungi. They even ranch, growing green flies. Like many human civilizations, the ant communities have the same features. These are stability, the drive for expansion, and cruelty to aliens. But apart from human societies, this organization doesn't come from any higher level decisions. It results from biologically based programmed cycle. Besides, ants use a chemical language, sounds, physical touch, and different environmental cues to coordinate their actions. Six, elephant female society. There is one more female-oriented society, the elephant herd. The elephant family always have a matriarchal head, an older, the most experienced lady elephant that is the boss. Female families range from three to 25 elephants. They are a mother, her sisters, daughters, their babies. They help each other to look after calves and protect all of them from different dangers. Adult male elephants generally lead a solitary life. They also can gather in groups of several males for protection. Elephants are known to develop strong bonds between friends and family members. Sometimes they form lifelong friendships with each other and even mourn the death of their loved ones. There are several tribes in different parts of our planet with matrilineal social structure. One of them is the small Mosuo tribe, which lives on the territory of China. There are all the women that live according to the rules which are very much alike. 5. The Complicated Structure of the Beehive Bees live in highly developed society, but there is no place for individuals. Only a group matters. Every beehive colony has a queen, thousands of female workers, and a few male drones. And there are a lot of different tasks for bees within a hive. They place pollen and nectar as food for developing larvae. They fix old cells, protect the hive from intruders, and explore the new territories. Male drones have the only one task in their life. They mate with a queen. In autumn, when the activity of a beehive comes down, male drones are ejected from the nest. The life within a hive is very organized. For instance, the colony can survive without foraging for several years. All the beehive can live on food reserves they have made beforehand. The social life within a hive reminds a bit the social life in feudal China or Japan, where individuality doesn't play any role at all. There is a strict hierarchy in beehive and no one is after the place of others. 4. Dolphin Collaborations Dolphins are highly sociable mammals that establish close relationships with other individuals of the same species and even with dolphins of other species sometimes. And they seem to show empathetic, cooperative, and altruistic behaviors. 
Dolphins live in groups called pots. Every pod is a long-term social unit and can count from 10 to 150 individuals. The scientists discovered that when dolphins belong to a group, nothing binds them to it. In other words, they do it just because they want to and can leave at any time. Of course, they have some benefits from being together. Protection, hunting, and having fun. But it doesn't mean, though, that pods lack social hierarchy. In general, there are three types of groups. Nursery groups for moms with children. The adult male group, which consists of two or three individuals of the same gender. Within such group, males create partnerships for cooperation purposes. And there are also juvenile groups for both males and females hanging out together. Just like human teenagers do sometimes. Dolphins communicate with their pods usually through whistles. Each dolphin has a unique whistle with unique frequency that identifies it with other members of its group, just like our names. So, dolphins have social structures which resemble our modern and developed societies greatly. They obtain varied and complicated bonds within social groups and have different aims for getting together. 3. Gorilla Social Networking There is a myth that gorillas are very aggressive and territorial. That they don't let others come to the place they live in. Nothing of the kind. Since gorillas continually travel in search of food, they cannot control one area. Gorilla's family consists of one mature male, three adult females, and two to three young. As the recent study showed, their social bonds are very much alike with people's. Within a group, they have not only close relatives from the family, but the several social circles. The first circle is an extended family of 12 to 13 apes. Aunts, uncles, grandparents and other distant relatives. There is one more circle of about 40 gorillas, which just hang out together. There are even groups of young males that collaborate a so-called bachelor-like gang. Besides, gorillas organize annual meetings something like festivals. The scientists think they are connected with picking their favorite fruits. Gorilla social life is sure can be compared to the settlements or villages of the prehistoric people or even some tribes that exist now. 2. The Wars of Chimpanzees Chimpanzees are our closest living relatives, sharing more than 98% of our genetic blueprint. You know, that they normally walk on all fours but can stand and walk upright. Chimps usually found in small groups of about 40 to 60 individuals. The groups have a definite hierarchy. There is an alpha male that dominates the entire group in hunting and mating. Just like in Planet of the Apes films. Dominance is not just acquired by power, but also by manipulation and politics. This hierarchy is also noticed in female chimpanzees, this type of social structure reminds the dictatorship in some way. Chimpanzees are rather aggressive towards the lower-ranking members and even to females. And they have very strong feelings of friend or foe. The interspecies aggression and even homicide are typical of chimps too. Like humans do, they fight very violent wars with other communities of chimps. Sometimes the war lasts for several years. Yes. We are very much alike with chimpanzees and not in positive way. 1. Bonobos Peace and Love But the pygmy chimpanzee bonobos have another point of view on social development. Bonobos have a make love not war mentality, which is in complete contrast to the often aggressive and violent manner of chimps. These hippies use making love for almost everything, including avoiding conflicts, showing affection, reducing stress, solidifying social status, and simply saying hello. They are much more likely to keep the peace by offering a sexual favor, whereas a chimpanzee's first instinct is to show off the dominance through battle. Bonobos live in varied social groups where a large community of individuals separate into smaller groups or parties. Bonobo groups tend to be more peaceful and are led by females. The conflicts between different groups happen, but very rare. So, as you can see, we have lots in common with Animal World. Sometimes the resemblance is not so positive as we wished it to be. 
but it means that we are much closer than we thought earlier. Hope you liked the video. Let us know in the comments below. What do you liked most?